<sighs> it's just it's just such a great day. Scout, you in such a good mood today. It's a beautiful day outside. It's literally raining. My phone's fully charged. Logic's album drops tonight. Ah, that's what's got you so happy. You know, I just, I love his message. You know, the, the whole peace, love, positivity movement. Likewise, he's a really dope artist. I'm completely for it, man. Like, I feel like he is me. Like, he embodies my whole thought process. Huh. So you believe in that whole message, you know, the whole peace, love, and positivity. Yeah, man, it, it's, it's dope. Equal rights for everybody. Equality for all, bro. That's how, that's what I believe in. Cool, cool, cool. I've been meaning to tell you, I mean, if that's how you feel, I think, you know, you look, you look kind of cute. What? What? Like, your whole, your face, you know, I think you, you I think you're attractive. I, that's not uh, a problem, is I, it? I, uh... Uh, Equal rights, uh, right? I like the way those pants hug your butt too, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alright, I'm, 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 I'm still a man, bro. I'm, a, I'm a man. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a go. You know what I really like about those pants? Yeah. They really emphasize that print, man. I, I'm, I'm liking that print. Alright, bro. I was just playing. Alright, I, it was, I was just playing. It was a joke. It was a joke. Bro, pause. No homo? Bro, pause, 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 pause! Oh! It's Sean C back in here with another music review and nothing happened just now. Don't ask. Let's be realistic here, okay? I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I've been a fan of Logic since 2008. Heard all his projects, heard all his mixtapes. I don't think there's a single song that this guy has released that I have not heard. So if I have any criticisms for an artist like Logic within this review, I don't need anybody who's been a fan of Logic for one, two, three years trying to come at me as if I'm a hater. I've supported this artist by buying every project. I even bought merch. I don't buy merch, I bought merch. Out of any artist in the industry right now, Logic is probably the one I appreciate the most. Although I don't think he's the best, I appreciate him the most. I'm gonna be drinking a lot of water. Apologize for the messy hair, I just washed it, had to get all the blood stains out. I'm, I, wait, what? I guess we can hop right into it. I've given my thoughts on Black Spider-Man and given my thoughts on um, everybody. Go check my videos for those if you want to. We're not gonna be playing too much of those. I might skim through them a little bit to give you guys a taste of what it sounds like, but those won't be played that long. Track number one, Hallelujah. Hold up, man. Ah, uh, God. Uh, seven minute intro. Why? Here we go. Okay. I'll just mention this right now. Logic is the only artist I can take singing, honestly. I can't even take Kendrick singing serious. Logic sounds the best out of his contemporaries as far as a singer is concerned. It's open, okay? I get it. Okay, he's hitting me way too much right now. He said a bunch of stuff after that, but I'm still stuck on the everybody acting like your brain don't matter. Mind over matter unless we talk in brain matter. Like, bruh, chill. Okay. Show me. Oh. And I'm, I'm on my way there right now. Life. What's it all about? What? Wait. Wait. What? I recognize his voice. I gotta look it up now. I gotta look it up. Oh, it's in the track. Neil. <sighs> I can't believe he got him. If, he, if he's gonna be narrating this entire album, logic. How do you know my name? You were walking home from work when you died. Died? Dead? I'm dead? You find out you're dead, and the first thing you worry about is other. Your wife was cheating on you. Wait, 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 the bitch did, oh. right? And even fucking she the... cheated on me. How you gonna tell me I'm dead? None of that matters now. Yeah, I guess it doesn't. Well, yes. I'm God. That was a very interesting first track, all right? The, the skit at the end kind of takes you away from the track a little bit. Um, but I am glad that he didn't separate this whole album into skit after skit after skit. Um, I actually prefer the skits being, you know, kind of 
intertwined within tracks. Uh, I think it makes for an easier listening experience. Uh, that way people won't just skip interludes like they probably did for the last album. He's basically starting off this uh, album saying that this is for everyone. This is for everybody. You all need to pay attention because I'm talking to all my children. And of course he's voicing, you know, God, Neil being God, I, I'm assuming. I don't know if we're going to get the perspective of this guy throughout the entire project, but I'm hoping. Let, let's. But that's uh, quite a doozy. Your wife's cheating on you. What a whole. Just gonna skim through everybody a little bit. Okay, I was gone for a minute, but I'm back now. Ten months, logic. Your last project came out in July. You've been gone for ten months. Ten. It ain't been that long, bro. Everybody, people. Everybody, please. Next track, confess, featuring Killer Mike. Oh my God, my heart. <laughs> Logic, what have you been eating? Have you been eating your Wheaties? He said, I speak life when I come in her mouth. You know what you're doing. I know God don't give a damn about me. Baptized in the Holy I get the reference. Why do you put up some service? Why do you put up the law of you evil motherfucker? We told you come to heal us at the end. I'm starting to hate the man in the mirror. It's getting clearer. So black I'm blue. So brown I'm dying. Logic. Hold up. See, I don't think some of you realize because of how much critique I have for Logic earlier on when he was releasing those other few tracks this was really introspective and it was very honest i mean the track is called confess and i loved killer mike's part you could feel the emotion in his voice the frustration the confusion the anger sadness i mean it i think it, it his voice cracked at one point in there so i was thinking you know oh man is he crying right now uh, asking why things are the way they are and just being this track is what 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 honesty is about it's being honest with how you truly feel um, you know, I know a lot of people that are religious and they'll tell you all day and all night how they love God, they believe in God, they trust in God, they have all this faith in God, but at the same time, uh, they're never honest with their human, with their human side. They're never honest enough to say, well, sometimes I have doubts. They're never honest to say, well, how is this fair? Or honest enough to say, I have questions that I haven't had answered yet. I'm, I'm confused. I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I'm sad. They think because they believe in God that they're supposed to abandon the humanity in them. And I don't think that's the case. Introspective. And I encourage everybody who's listening to it to continue to listen to it. Not only is it great instrumentally, but it portrays this message and this image of people from a very realistic point of view, not from this... I believe in God and that's it kind of mentality. Track number four, Killing Spree, featuring during Ansel Elgort. <laughs> oh my god. I mean so he's calling everybody a hypocrite basically. Don't tweet about it, because you're not helping. Uh, don't blame any don't blame a whole group for for one person's actions and uh that 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 hook is actually pretty cool too i don't like the way he's saying it but the hook is still good i know that's the reason you turn up at night living your life i'm away that track, uh, sonically, I was a little indifferent to her. It's not the greatest uh, beat selection in the world. It's really hard hitting and it drops just when it needs to. For the context of the song, I didn't need it to go that hard, I guess. It's, it's kind of like a banger with a positive message or a, a message that kind of triggers a thought process telling you you're not going to find the meaning of life through a cell phone you know, you know social media shouldn't be where you find your happiness it shouldn't be where you attain uh this goal get the point of it uh it just seems to appeal to what it's going against in a way but i know logic is aware that people like these kinds of beats and i don't mind that uh, i think the feature did really well he actually reminded me a bit of post malone with his vocals and overall it was a good track it was a decent message that was put in track number five take it back we got a six minute song here. Take it back, take it way back, take it way, way back to the first black man let me go before no, no, no. I didn't think he was gonna make this a full song. I forgot about this beat when I first heard it on Twitter too. I already know, okay. Let me just go ahead and just, let me just let. 
You must be out of your mind if you thought I was gonna down that whole bottle right now. track i want to commend him on this album so far he has been if you want to compare him to anybody stop because on this album i feel like he is 100 percent developed his own sound as a rapper with this so far i don't think it was a bad song i don't think it was a, a an amazing song i really like the beat in the background i'm glad he extended it um i didn't expect that to carry on for almost seven minutes but it did uh, Logic comes through with this uh, really lengthy speech halfway through about, you know, the, the contradictions of his parents, more so his mother saying, you know, how are you going to be racist and, you know, have black babies? Clearly there's something wrong there. Yeah, he acknowledges that and he's saying, I don't even want, I don't even have time to ponder on this. Like, let me just skip this. But I like how he expresses his frustrations on the track, basically saying all these people uh, coming against me for being biracial, something that I can't help. Uh, we've seen him cover this a lot. I'm not gonna lie. We've seen him talk about this on Black Spider-Man. We've seen him talk about this on everybody. I don't need to hear it again, but I understand. And uh, being, you know, a person who used to go through some issues with not being 100% black, I understand where he's coming from. You're never really 100% accepted within your community. Although we live in a time now where people don't view it as much of a big deal, there are still some out there and I can definitely see it being a big issue a couple years ago. Track number six, America featuring Black Thought. Chuck D and the last name I can't read because Apple Music. Oh my God. Hit me. What did I, what did I, just, what did I say? What did I just say? I get it! Hear about her? This beat is flow! Young blood is not love. Cast it That wasn't wrong. This I like. Oh, and that's nice. The waiter coming in. All right. Uh, for that track, I was I was impressed. I don't think the added uh, you know, distorted vocals from Logic made the song that much better. Subject matter wise, it did trigger a thought process that I've been holding back for a couple of videos because I just didn't feel like any video I covered recently uh, gave me the opportunity to do so. But when he was talking about they didn't have a chance, like he never really had a chance, you know, as a as a black man. I think what he's saying there, and people will misinterpret what he's saying, he's saying, you just have to add a little context, in my opinion, and especially at the latter part of the song where he's saying, send the blacks back to Africa, uh, send the whites back to Europe, and give, you know, the Native Americans their land back. Imagine taking a group of people from their home, right? You take a group of people from where they naturally live, you enslave them. Once you enslave them, you give them no tools, you don't really give them um, education, you make them work for nothing basically you pretty much make them work for free uh and you beat them you rape them you kill them then all of a sudden a couple hundred years later hey free slaves are free they're done no more slavery no more slavery and uh you know whites can no longer enslave blacks cool right wrong what happens is you're left with a group of people that are left to fend for themselves in a country they didn't belong in in the first place. Now, I'm happy we have biracial people. I'm happy we have mixed ethnicities. I'm happy we have uh, people of different cultures and different cultural backgrounds. I wouldn't be here without that possibility. However, when you take a group of people from their homeland, enslave them, do all these horrible things, and then once they're freed, you expect them to prosper 
the same way you do, that doesn't make sense. If I have a child and I leave him in a shed for 18 years and don't say a word to him, don't give him any skills, don't add to his life, don't help him progress in any way, how am I gonna be surprised if this kid ends up a no life when I come back to see him 18 years later? You took someone from their land and then you left them in another land after literally enslaving them and then ridicule them hundreds of years later when some of them haven't changed. Why, how do you not think that it would be an issue taking people from their land and then leaving them here and then, oh, slavery's abolished and then expecting everything to be fine after that? How does that work? And I'm not putting all the blame on one group of people here, I'm not. But at the same time, I'm being objective here. It's not all the whites' fault, but you gotta understand that you have people that still think with a slave mentality. There are people that aren't as fortunate to have had an education, be raised in a, a somewhat better background, to have had certain opportunities given to them. Not every person of color has had that. So there are other people of other ethnicities, other races, and of people within their own race that judge one another because you don't talk like me, you don't look like me, you don't think like me. So I have the right to judge you, that doesn't make any sense. So that's what that song triggered for me. I wouldn't necessarily say it covered those topics specifically, but uh, some of the things that Logic was talking about, it definitely had me thinking that way. Musically, the song isn't the best. It carries that vibe, I feel like, a fast-paced action. Track number seven, Ink Blot, featuring Juicy J. I like how he came in on that. I love that. I ain't me, I'm who you want me to be. People have this image of people. You want somebody to be the way you think they are. You don't know them. Don't say how some part so don't say how somebody is, you don't know them. I love that line. And the way they're mixing in their flows and, and, and their rap coming in on each other's verses, I think that ties us on together too. Keep up on I'ma keep I'ma keep uh I'm like dumbass motherfuckers, man. All the gram, all the snapchat with yourself, nigga. Kill your motherfucking self, nigga. Slop on my knob. On my knob, on my Okay, that last part was just corny. You were good with the a nice little beat selection didn't think it really tied that much into the album it definitely shows how logic feels as a rapper he should be able to have that creative freedom and make what he wants to make without people um basically putting him into this box track number eight most definitely i'm assuming there's gonna be some most definite references on here so let's get it man don't you do it don't you do it just do it just do it That's what I wanted. And again, just wanna follow my dreams, just wanna follow my heart, but the world wanna tell me if I take my mind playing tricks on me like I get a boy, feel like I need to murder him in the moment of the floor. If I put it in it, but it's buddy, stay tuned like T Pain. I'm gonna be driving your mind like T Pain. Come down. Say, come on, everybody, stay tuned like T Pain. I love that. I, hey. Let me buy you a drink. Cause the white man with the black man stay broke. Fuck that, I'm finna fuck back. But now remember to get back when you get that. When you finally get to the top and you hit that, it's crazy. Black people sit back, just love, open the door. All right, so for that track, I definitely like the beat. I love Logic's vocals on there. I do appreciate, like I said, what he's talking about, where we're getting a lot of black and white issues. And for the uh, album name to be everybody, it's just more so centered around these two topics currently. Um, we're not getting that much into other groups. We're not getting that much into other orientations, other religions. Uh, we've heard slight mention of it, but we haven't gotten that deep as, uh, as opposed to the logic investing us into the black and white issue, which, you know, it's fine. It's understandable. It's relatable. And that's the, that's the thing that logic uh, kind of embodies is his relatability. That's what makes him such a popular artist today is the people can understand him. They can relate to him. But with this track, it, it definitely opened my eyes when he's like, you know, uh, I guess singing black people are beautiful, they, you know, empowering them because they are, you know, I'm not saying they like, I'm not a part of the group. We're a group that is, you know, oppressed a lot. But I think he's giving too much praise without offering any criticism. And that's the problem so far with the album as far as it, uh, as it pertains to black people. It, it gives them a lot of praise without much consequence behind it. I want him to, if he's going to discuss topics about everyone, to kind of not just come down on 
one group of people as if they're the only problem here. Track number nine, waiting room. Reincarnation, if that's what you want to call it. What the fuck do you mean, if that's what I want to call it? I love these sure. skits, by the way. I love Jimmy, these. We talk, and you send me back to Earth to be reborn. You know, the last time we had this conversation, it was in Mandarin. I'm actually about to send you back to 1736. The hundreds of slaves you'll own? Slaves? Oh, oh hell no. I like no, no, this. No, 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 no. Look, look, look. How you gonna take a black man, send him back in time, and you now I gotta own slaves? You won't be a black man. You won't well, be a black man. if there's any cons, you just wouldn't understand. But if there's others like you, how could you be God? Adam. I said you wouldn't understand. You are every human being who has ever existed since the dawn of your kind. You're beginning to see it. Oh, so I like this. Ev every act of hatred and violence you committed against another, you were committing against, against yourself. yourself. Never did I think I would sit through a four minute skit, but that was really nice. Uh, his voice. Oh, good. You know, I'm not going to get too religious because, like I said, I know not everyone can agree with that but i think it's a healthy kind of way to meet at the middle with a lot of people to say that adam and i did realize that in the very beginning like when he first introduced this character i'm like adam is a bit of a strange name for this guy to have just for him to you know it's just it, it doesn't seem like coincidence but i didn't mention it because i didn't think it was that connected but it is and um if you don't take anything away from this track which you should take away from it you should value others experiences you should value and appreciate others around you because essentially they are you they're just you in a different form you in a different race you in a different orientation you in a different financial or political setting it's you that you're talking to it's you that you're arguing against it's you you're literally having fights and warring around with yourself donald trump he's us okay maybe maybe okay maybe there's a select few but honestly these people that everyone is so against these people that everyone finds fault with and you know are so critical of you're criticizing yourself. You're being hateful towards yourself. If you show love, you're showing love to yourself. And I think people leave and lead such singular lives. They want to be so separate from everyone else. They don't realize that you're literally trying to isolate yourself from yourself. And they're making it seem like Adam was the one that this applies to. I think there's a little, I think there's a few holes within this concept, like how a lot of the Christian faith has an issue with homosexuality, but uh, in this kind of excerpt, it's kind of implying that God is saying that you need to live through those experiences as well as if he doesn't have a problem with it. At the same time, that could mean that, you know, he views himself uh, aside from religion. God didn't write the book. He didn't write the Bible. That was a man-made product. So you're, you're listening to a, a creation of words that a man wrote. It wasn't, you know, oh man, God just you know, he delivered this via UPS from heaven and said, here, you guys read this. It, that wasn't how it went. And I was happy with it. And I can actually listen to that skit a lot. Track number 10, uh, the suicide hotline, basically, because that's, yeah, that's the suicide hotline. Uh, featuring Alicia Cara and another name I can't read because of Apple Music. I feel like I'm out of my mind. I feel like my life ain't mine. I just want to die. Musically, I'm not a huge fan of it, musically. Message wise, he did a really great job. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this track, or the way I interpret it, was how he was singing, I Just Wanna Die. Um, it goes to show that a lot of the time when people mention uh, acts of suicide, a lot of the time they always leave this this phrase. This this sentence comes a lot when people uh, have conversations about suicide. Oh, he or she was, they seem so happy. They always had a smile on their face. They were always laughing. And with this track, Logic is singing, I just want to die. I don't know if he's singing it with the intention of it coming across as if he's weeping or if he's singing it with, you know, the intention of coming off as joyful so that it gives off that mentality for people that think, oh man, he seems happy, but he's actually rapping or singing about something that's really depressing to show that it goes against the outside uh, experience that you're having with an, with an individual. The internal struggle can be a lot bigger than the outside experience that you're receiving. It's a necessary track. It, we got another track on here that does encompass more than just the black and white situation. It kind of includes uh, people from the depression side of the spectrum. If you're in a great mood, it's not a track you're gonna keep revisiting. 
Um, and that's the thing with this track is it, you need to be in this mood to get the juice out of it. You need to suck the life out of it. And you need to kind of be in that mood to really appreciate it. You kind of need to be sad, a little down. It's meant for people who are depressed. It's not meant for you if you're not in that mode or in that feeling. But you can still appreciate it from a message standpoint. You just might not get everything out of it because you might not be in that mood. And I thought Alicia Cara's vocals were pretty good too. I think she's a really good vocalist. I don't. I never really dislike any of her music. And Khalid coming in at the end, I thought was a perfect addition to the track as well. Uh, not a bad song. I really did enjoy it. Track number eleven, Anxiety. <laughs> Vocals are beautiful. I love this song. It's it's done beautifully. Nothing was wrong. Before I knew it, I felt as though I was going to fall and fade away. The doctor said it was anxiety. The sense of being out of one's body. Right, another really really uh, powerful track as far as tackling anxiety to be honest I don't know why it's spelled like that Lucy's vocals were very powerful uh, I thought she dominated for her feature I thought the instrumental was done beautifully I thought the instrumentation during the part where logic is just talking I think that might be the point where he has an orchestra like his whole uh, entire orchestral team I think he has in the studio with him because that sounded beautiful especially it, it comes in just at the time where he starts talking like he really pushes that message home that he's talking to you and the music just adds to the experience in my opinion uh, in the beginning half if he would have just talked for that track I don't I don't even think I would have mind I think in the beginning of that track he's rapping from the perspective of anxiety like he's about to get in your mind he's about to make you want to pray to God he's about to mess you up basically in my opinion and uh, during the second verse he's talking about how he's been battling this how it's been an issue how it's been a problem how you know he's in denial that he even has it it's a very tough thing to get through and it's very honest and he's being very open with the track and i definitely appreciate that and giving people an escape giving people an outlet with this song to help them get through their anxiety as well so definitely a good track next track black spider-man uh we've heard this one already don't really feel the need to go into it but after listening to this song again it actually explores more homosexuality um, so it is a track on here for that. I think it fits within the uh, context of the album. So we're gonna go to the last track, Africarian, and Neil gets credits for this one. So uh, let's let's listen to it. In the blood, been looking for holy water. Now I'm praying for a flood. It feel like time passing me by slower than the slug. Tell me you love me, need me, promise me you'll never leave me. Even though my daddy, you know he blacker than the street. Wanna lynch me? Damn, my skin fair, but life's not. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't care what white star. Getting angrier, more passionate. Forever. No, Thalia's tracking system says we'll be there. Did it? Did any of you guys watch Toonami? Did any of you watch Toonami if you when you were a kid? I'm queuing up the fourth album now. I cannot believe he. This I, final one. Oh. One, two, three, four. In my eyes, tell me you can see beyond the smile that Wait, I'm putting Jake on the front that I'm putting up for you. I spill my soul into a microphone with poems written in blood in hopes that it's enough for you. I never feel your approval till I accept my own. Come from a messed up home, destitute and less informed about the ways to raise a child up. Let's close our soul till five or so in the morn. I'm used to being alone. A solace, so where's the logic in that? Where we about it, they think logic and rap. When the logic goes back, no, to be true. But at the same time, oh, I like never this. Be this is for youngins out there wondering how far you can fly. The truth is that you can go further than the. You no, know, you weren't listed as a feature. Why are you here? It's not that I don't want you here, but I'm surprised. That was Logic's uh, album, Everybody. We have to give Logic credit for being probably the only artist this year to have a album that's going to encompass as many different groups of people that he possibly could. Um, I didn't expect him to get to or cover as many topics as he did with this album. He tries to, and I appreciate him for that, bringing light to issues that most people kind of sweep under the rug. They don't think about as often. They don't really give the time or the appropriate attention to when discussing subjects about black and white, gay or straight, 
depression and anxiety having all these thoughts and uh it can really put a damper on how we view ourselves as humans and he brought a lot of light to that so for that i completely commend him he doesn't explore too many flows which i'm not actually disappointed with i think logic sticking with this sound actually makes it harder for people out there who hate him to say he sounds like his contemporaries because in my opinion this is one of the first projects or albums i feel like logic has dominated his own sound he's had his own flow his own delivery he's definitely been uh this is an indigenous album in my opinion because i could only picture someone like logic on these tracks i couldn't picture anybody else on them which for me helps logic's credibility it helps him as a rapper as an mc as an artist it just helps him on projects like under pressure uh tits bobby tarantino logic's been chastised or criticized for sounding like other artists or you know adapting or adopting to or kind of compromising his own sound for the beat or compromising his lyrics for the beat or compromising his beat for the lyrics lyrics a lot of the time it never felt like he had both and with this album it's not that strong lyrically but he does tackle a lot of subjects and there are a lot of necessary tracks on this album. Having a lot of uh, uncredited features that make the album a bit more of a shock or surprise when you finally hear the person come on like the voice of the narrator from Toonami. Grabbing Neil whose voice is almost as addicting as Morgan Freeman's. And putting J. Cole at the end is just, uh, it's just icing on the cake. He's spitting advice to Logic and to his fans and I really can appreciate that that Cole actually took that time out and decided, hey, I'm gonna give Logic some advice because it, it means that as a fellow artist, he sees the potential within Logic and he, he cares enough that he wants Logic to kind of rid his mind of things that don't really matter or things that can hinder him. And you know, you don't really see artists giving each other advice these days. They just wanna be on a feature. They just want, you know, to capitalize their own growth. So for me, I definitely appreciate uh, J. Cole's input on that final track. The instrumentation on this thing is incredible. Um, it really sounds like Logic just got a group, like a whole orchestra going in the studio and recorded live instruments. This definitely sounded pretty good. Uh, there was a lot of production. I don't think he was reliant on it though. I think it actually helps. Logic's singing voice is even improved. I didn't expect him to have, you know, really good vocals on this album, but he does. And I think out of all of his rappers, every rapper out here, I think I can tolerate his singing voice the most. Even though I know he's got multiple takes and he's doing it time after time to get the album in the setting just perfect. I think he does it in a way that makes it seem like it's not a stretch for you to see Logic singing. Now that I'm done riding the Logic train, as a fan, I'm really excited and I'm really glad that this album came out. But let's be realistic here and uh, express uh, the problems I have with this album. Problem number one, this album covers race as if there are only two of them. Even though the album says everybody, even though we get, you know, slight comments about, oh, Muslim this, Mexican this it doesn't really explore those other avenues as much as I feel it should for the album title to be called Everybody I'm not expecting the world from logic So I completely understand him tackling the issues that he's more familiar with But to have issues on here where you're more familiar with that you give more attention to that doesn't help me If I was going through depression from being homosexual, which I'm not but if I were this album wasn't really explored. It doesn't go that deep into that for it to be everybody. If I was Asian or if I was uh, if I was Buddhist, it doesn't really encompass everyone as it promotes. It tries to, and I can definitely uh, accept that fact, and I love that it, it tries to encompass everyone, and it, he wants to be accepted as this person who accepts everyone else, but uh, when you're listening to this album, you don't really get that experience. I think on the skits, uh, Neil does really well. I think he was perfectly placed uh, in the intro track on the track where I think it's called Waiting Room. And at the end, I think he's placed perfectly. The only issue with that is where Logic tries to give commentary within his own tracks, you kind of wish Neil was commentating instead, in my opinion. Um, I know Logic's telling his own story and he's giving you perspective. He's adding more detail, going more in depth, being more introspective with those tracks, but in my opinion, I just think when I've heard Neil on some of these earlier tracks or even expecting him on a later track, for me, it doesn't help when I hear Logic narrating some of his own tracks. It's just, why wouldn't you get Neil on there? And it's not really why wouldn't you, but why would you do it yourself after Neil's been narrating some of this album already? Like you don't really see how low Logic's uh, input on this album as far as narrating is concerned is until you compare it to Neil's. Logic has had better bars in the past before. I don't think there were too many really deep quotables on here. Nothing that made me just 
you know, say I want to take off all my clothes and go crazy and scream outside that the world's ending because the logic burned my house down. Although this wasn't the, the deepest album in terms of lyrics, uh, it definitely wasn't a kitty album and it definitely could have been cheesier. This could have been a really cheesy album if done wrong. I think the topics that he discusses uh, are painted in a realistic light to some degree when it comes to depression, when it comes to anxiety. A lot of people view anxiety as, it's, as though it's not really a thing. So it affecting you, people would naturally be in denial. Uh, depression is another kind of one of those things that you know he's giving light to. I think people take depression a little bit more seriously than they take anxiety because depression, they connect to suicide. All right, which on that track he's telling you, you can get through it, you can still live, you can, there's a better day, there's better times out there. I definitely appreciate Logic for including these tracks within this album. I love how introspective and deep he tries to be on a lot of these tracks. Um, not all of them are successful attempt, like America, which triggers my own thought process more than Logic gives me a thought process. The one that features Juicy J, which is a cool song, it's cool if you're a rapper, but if you're not, it doesn't really apply to you. On Killing Spree, where I felt like he could have been way deeper on that track, I feel like he could have tackled a lot more issues than just people spend too much time on social media. But one of the tracks on here where I felt he did just what he needed to do was on Confess that features Killer Mike where Killer Mike gives a great performance and you really can feel the frustration, you can feel the anger and the emotion within Killer Mike's voice. Dude, I am pissed. He even says at one point in the song that he's so black that he's blue. That, that tells you he feels sad at this point to be black. It's not that he doesn't want to be, but it saddens him because he knows what that does. On the track Take It Back, I thought he did a really good job of trying to convey his message again. This is where the problem with him narrating his own tracks comes in for me. All in all, with the ups and the downs with this album, I definitely think it's a solid piece of work. I think it'll carry him over into his next project. On the last track, I do want to mention how they say that uh, Logic's fourth album is going to be his last. I don't know if he plans to retire. I don't know if you know, he's gotten all he's needed to get out of the rap game. Maybe he feels like, uh, you know, this is the best, you know, this is as good as it gets. Like maybe he wants to end it because he doesn't want to see himself become everything that he's criticizing. Yeah, I think he did a really good job. So I'm going to throw uh, tracks that I probably wouldn't revisit, but the album as a whole just... You can't be upset with it and that's its redeeming quality is that this is an album that's not necessarily necessary but it's an album that you have to look at and just appreciate you know i might not like every single track on here i might not like that he tackles some of the same issues over and over again and i might not like that he's not that strong lyrically on every track consistently but the fact that he made the album you just have to appreciate it because I don't think anybody else is going to. Thank you guys for watching. It's been Sean C. I'll see you in the next one. Go ahead, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you have not already. Let me know how you felt about this album. And uh, yeah, what track on here was your favorite? Let me know. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. It is so cold down here.